Hi, in this video we're going to be talking about Nobara Linux. So this is yet another version or flavor of Linux. Uh, this is based on Fedora, and it's a good one for gamers, you know, media creators, content creators, that type of thing. So it has a lot of uh, nice apps built into it. So it might be worth the checking out if you're thinking about installing Linux on your computer. All right, so in this video we're just going to run through the features and show you how to install it, and then you can try it out for yourself if you think you might like it. All right, so you're going to first need to download the ISO file, create your bootable flash drive or CD if you still have one of those, and then set your computer to boot to it. And then this is the boot screen you will get. And I believe there's a 30 second countdown. So if you don't move an arrow key, then it's going to just load the default, which is start Nobara. All right, so that's what we're going to do. So we're going to load it into memory. So we're not going to have it running on the computer, at least right now. So this just allows you to use it and try it out without having to actually install it. All right, so I'll press enter on this screen. All right, so you'll notice that when you first boot it up, it tries to run the installer, but you could just click on cancel if you don't want to install and then just start using it. Uh, to try it out in live mode. All right, so you can see there's a bunch of packages available, but that's not going to matter if we're not running it off the hard drive because installing these packages will not do any good. So just keep in mind, anything you do uh, while you're running it in memory here will not be saved if you shut it down. So if you install something or copy a file, it's not going to uh, be there the next time. All right, so here is the main desktop. So we're going to be going over this after we do the installation. So if you just want to, you know, to play around, check out the apps, all the categories, the settings, and that type of thing, you can do that. When, when you're ready to install, you'll see there's an icon here that says Install Nobara, so we're going to do that. All right, so we have our welcome screen. Pick your language. All right, then you could also change your time zone if it's not correct, if it doesn't detect it. You could just move it around from here if you want. Or you could use one of the drop down menus here. All right, keyboard setup. If you need to change that, you could do that. All right, so now we'll put a name for this user. We'll just go with our default Bob here. And then this just takes that name and makes a user account with it. You don't have to use the same name. It also makes it lowercase. And it'll automatically give the computer a name, but you could change that as well. And then we'll just put in a password here. Okay, it's not a good password, but it's just for a test, so I'm not worried about it. And then you could have that password also apply to the root user, and then you could have it log in without having to type in the password. All right, so we'll click on next here. All right, so here's where you need to configure disk. So it depends if you are maybe dual booting with Windows and you have your C drive, you know, partitioned out for the extra space here for Linux, or if you have a secondary drive, just make sure you pick the right one from the list. And then if you want to do some manual partitioning, let's say you don't want to use the whole drive for Linux and you want to have some leftover for something else or a secondary partition, you could use this method. But we're just going to go with the first one here, erase the disk. And then you could change any settings here if needed for the swap file. So here's the current configuration, nothing on it. And here's what it's going to look like afterwards. And then you can encrypt it too, kind of like you could do with Windows with BitLocker. But we're not going to worry about that either. I click on Next. All right, so here's your summary. If everything looks good, just click on Install. Install now. All right, so this process will take a few minutes. So I will pause the video and be back when it's done. All right, so our installation is complete. Probably took about 10 minutes or so. So now we just need to take out our flash drive and restart the computer to run it off the hard drive. So we'll do that right now. All right, so now we have a different boot menu here. Kill the timer. So we have our normal mode and our rescue mode here. So we're going to do the normal mode. So this is using the KDE Plasma desktop, if you saw that. I believe there's a GNOME version as well, if you'd rather use that. All right, so now we have our startup screen. So if you want to just, you know, go through some steps and kind of learn about it, uh, you could just check this stuff out. 
here's our updates again we'll deal with that later and then if you don't want to see it each time you can uncheck that alright so we have our desktop here we have our taskbar you right click on it you could show your panel configuration change alignment options width style and so on all right so now it wants to do this update so i'll click on yes and then i'll have to pause the video here if it's going to take too long all right so that part ran so now we can click on install updates all right so the updates are complete and that actually took longer than it did to install the os so that's probably because it was the first major update so hopefully additional updates will not take that long so let's close this out here oh getting another message here reboot is required so let me go ahead and reboot and then we'll be right back All right, so now you can see in our boot menu, we have a new entry here. So we have our rescue one we had before, then we have our older 6.14, now we have the newer 6.16. So when you do these major updates, especially kernel updates, uh, you might run into this. So it's kind of like a rescue thing. So let's say the updates were giving you problems, then you could come back here and boot into the older version and see if you could figure out how to fix it. All right, so we're going to go into the latest and greatest. So I'll just press enter here. All right, so we're back on our desktop, so let's start checking out some of the features here. So let's start with the desktop, right click. You could do new folders and files, links, and so on. Sort your icons if you had any icons on the desktop here. Open the terminal, enter edit mode for the desktop. So if you want to add some widgets or some panels, you could do that. Show the logout screen, change your display and wallpaper, your display configuration. Let's check out the wallpapers here real quick. So quite a few to choose from here. Let's try something simple like this. All right, and then while we're here, you could change your views the type, positioning, you have mouse options here, which I didn't click on OK, so I'll have to go back and change that, uh, location, icons, how you want to align them, filtering options, and about. Now let's go back here. All right, so there's our new desktop. But then you can also right click here on the taskbar or panel as it's called. Show the configuration. So this is what we're looking at before here. If you want to change the position, alignment, the width, uh, visibility, the height, delete it, clone it, add a new one. So if you want to have like a panel on the side or the top with a different icons, so you could do that. And just exit when you're done. And here's the widget options. You want to try out some of these. You can see here when you click on them that will add a little icon down there depending what it is. Hard disk activity. Add a little phone icon there for KDE Connect and that type of thing. Then you have some alternative widgets if you want to try a different style here. Then we have our icons only task manager settings for appearance, behavior, keyboard shortcuts, and so on. All right, then we just have our basic pinned icons here. So we have the Brave browser that uses Dolphin for the file manager. You can see it has a similar window set up here with all your favorite shortcuts. 
network information, recent files and folders. So here's your software with flat post if you want to try installing something new. All right, that took a minute to load there. All right, so here we have our software options. So it's kind of like the Microsoft Store in a way. You can just kind of browse through things and install it or do a search. And you can see your installed apps, so nothing here. Check for updates, nothing here. Repositories, if you want to change repositories or add a new one. Popular apps and so on. And we have a bunch of different categories down here. All right, let's say we wanted to try one of these apps like this audio tube. Just click on install. All right, so that's been installed. It took a little bit of time, actually. All right, now we have it listed under in, our installed. You can see some other things showed up here as well. You can double click on it if you want to uninstall it and get some information about it. Now you can see it's listed in our all applications here as a new app. Then we have some settings here for the app installer. All right, so down here we also have some updates, uh, system settings. So a lot of options here. So we'll just kind of click through these real quick so you get an idea of what we have here. All right, here are some quick settings, mouse and touchpad settings. And some of these uh, categories will have subcategories, as you can see here. Keyboard options, touchscreen if you have a touchscreen, multimedia options audio CDs, encoders, and that type of thing. Game controller if you're playing games. Drawing tablet if you have a tablet. Sound options here for output and microphone. Notification sounds. Display options here if you want to change your resolution or orientation. Color profiles and so on. There's even a nightlight mode. Accessibility options if you need to check any of those. Bluetooth options, so no Bluetooth on this computer, no camera either. Thunderbolt options if it's supported on your computer. Uh, printers if you want to add a printer. It'll try and discover them on its own, otherwise you could do manual configuration. One of these options here. All right, then you got your internet options here. So we're using a wired connection here. Using IPv4 and automatic, meaning DHCP, you can change that. Then you have proxy settings and connection preferences. Online accounts, so if you wanted to add an account, one of these services here, if you use these, or even your Google account. Push notifications, remote desktop, if you want to use that to remotely connect to computers or connect to this computer. Wallpaper we saw, colors and themes, a bunch of different options under that. Text and font options, animations. Then we've got our default apps if you want to change any of those. Notification options, window management options for task switcher, desktop effects, and so on. Virtual desktops. Activities. You want to create a new activity here. Workspace behaviors. Search options. For file and plasma. Screen locking. App permissions. KDE wallet if you want to use that option. Recent files, feedback, change your language. A spell checker, change the date and time, about, if you want to see your versions, and if you want to see your information about your hardware, power management, users, if you want to add a user account, 
pretty basic there, either standard or admin, make a password, and that's all there is to it. Then we have our auto start if you have items that were set to start with your computer, and then session information. All right, so as you can see, there are quite a few settings that you could configure. All right, let's just check out some of the apps here. So here are your power options here. You got your favorites, you can search, you can pin apps. You can configure the app launcher if you want to do that. All right, then we have the all apps, which will list everything, and then we have them broken down into various categories. So all apps will show everything, but then you'll just be able to see the ones that apply to the specific category here. Uh, games, graphics, internet, multimedia. Comes with LibreOffice, so that's nice. It's already installed for you. Bunch of system apps here. If you want to configure the firewall, partition manager, get to your console for command line stuff, driver manager, system monitor, another way to do updates. And then we have some utilities here for file archives, emojis, calculators. RPM installers, and then we have the Wine option here. So if you want to configure Wine, that is used to run Windows applications in Linux. Obviously, it's not going to run everything, but you can use it and then just see which applications you can install once you have it configured. All right, so as you can see, Novara Linux, it's a pretty nice version. And it's got a lot of nice features, and it's pretty easy to use. It's pretty easy to configure, so you might want to give it a shot. All right, so I'll put a link in the description where you can download the ISO file, and then you can try it out for yourself. Just remember to run it in the live mode first to test it out, and then if you like it, you could go ahead and install it on your hard drive. All right, thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe.